There are five mistakes I see first-time filmmakers make all the time, and I'm gonna help you avoid them. Three, two, one. Here we go! Hi, and welcome to DIY Film with Merle Becker, the channel where I help you make better videos. Stick around to the end of the video for today's filmmaking tip. All right, let's talk first films. Ask any filmmaker if they enjoy watching their first film, and chances are they'll say no. Because the truth is, your first film is usually your first chance to try things out on your own. Up to this point, you've probably only worked as part of a crew, or maybe under another director. And now you're calling the shots. And sometimes you get it right, and sometimes you get it wrong. And when you get it wrong, it's immortalized forever in that first film. I can't sit through my first film. Hashtag true story. But wouldn't it be great if I could save you from having to say this? That's why I created this list of five things that you can do to avoid making those first-time filmmaker mistakes. Number one, have a story. Let's talk about story before we even get to the technical stuff, because we'll get there, but first things first. Your story comes first, always. It's what should drive every other production decision you make. But here's what sometimes happens. The first-time filmmaker is really psyched to go out and try their camera or editing technique, and they go out and shoot a bunch of cool-looking footage, and they put it together to make a little film of cool-looking footage. But who is this for? Besides maybe someone who is looking for someone with a demo reel of cool-looking footage, but that's about it. Now, I know some of you aren't working on a feature film. You're working on YouTube videos or videos for your brand. But even with these, your videos need a purpose or story. For vloggers or social media marketers, this means figuring out your intent. Don't just hit record and hope it comes to you. It will eventually, but not until after endless takes of you being unprepared and awkward on camera and hours of trying to edit together something cohesive from all that unprepared awkward footage with poor results. Figure out what you want to say in your video and who you are speaking to before you hit record. And for you filmmakers out there, most seasoned filmmakers have studied what makes a good story. I'm going to simplify what hundreds of script writing books say because they basically say the same thing. Your story should have a hero, your hero should have a problem to solve, and your hero should solve this problem by the end of your story. And they should change in some way as a result of solving it. Also, it helps to understand things like inciting incident and rising action as they pertain to story. I plan on doing a whole video on story structure, so keep an eye out. But for now, let's just focus on having a hero who has a problem who solves it. And I'll leave links in the description to some good books on story. Number two, pay attention to your frame rate. Many first-time filmmakers just pick up their camera and start shooting away without giving a thought to frame rate. But when you turn on your camera, it's important to know what frame rate you're shooting in. For those of you who aren't sure what frame rate is, it's as follows. Frame rate, or frames per second, is simply how many still frames are shown during each second. All moving images, or movies, are made up of several still images, like a flipbook. Hollywood movies are typically shot on film, which has 24 frames per second. Television is typically shot on video, which is broadcast at 30 frames per second, and looks a little different when it comes to things like motion blur. So pick a frame rate, set your camera, and stick with it for your project. When doing this, you've got to figure out what frame rate is most appropriate for what you're working on. First, let's start out by saying it's a little hard to notice what frame rate something was shot at right off the bat. It's almost like a subconscious thing that our brain picks up on. It's even harder to tell here because the 30 footage is in a 24 timeline and Premiere is compensating. Hollywood movies have historically been shot in 24 frames per second. And when you see footage shot in 24, your brain registers the piece as a little more dreamy or cinematic, like a real movie. There's also more motion blur with 24 frames per second, which, some argue, smooths the footage out and gives it that dreamy feel. Television, on the other hand, has historically been shot in 30 frames per second. And when you see footage shot in 30, your brain registers this as more newsy or realistic, like something you would see on TV. There is also less motion blur in footage shot in 30 frames per second, arguably giving it that like-real-life kind of feel. 
So, in summary, if you're going for a Hollywood movie-like feel, choose 24 frames per second. And if you're going for a nightly news feel, choose 30 frames per second. I like to shoot in 24 frames per second, even for documentary content, because it just has a nice feel. But whatever you do, try not to mix your frame rates, because it's going to start to look weird in the edit. Okay, number three, pay attention to lighting. Paying attention to lighting can mean planning to shoot your scene during the golden hour when the natural light is flattering, or it can mean setting up artificial lights. Often, first-time filmmakers just plop a camera in a room under the fluorescent lights on the ceiling with little or no thought given to where or what the light source is, or how it's making their scene look. And the scene ends up looking flat and boring, and like a first film. But a seasoned filmmaker has learned about how to use light sources to make their scene look more cinematic. And you can too. Like by using a three-point lighting setup to add depth to your scene and draw attention to your hero. If you don't know how to do this, check out my video about three-point lighting. I'll leave a link in the description. Also consider using umbrellas or softboxes for diffusion. Diffusion smooths out skin tones and it'll make your hero look more heroic. The truth is, great lighting can make even the lowest budget film look like a million dollars. So invest in a light kit if you can and learn the basics of lighting so you can avoid the bad lighting mistake. Number four, record clean audio. I have a whole video on recording clean audio, so if you want to dive deeper, I'll leave a link in the description. One of the most common YouTuber, vlogger, and first-time filmmaker mistakes is using the camera mic to record audio instead of using an external microphone. Use an external microphone to record your audio, always. You can get an external microphone for relatively cheap and it'll make a world of difference when it comes to your audio. An external microphone will allow you to get closer to your subject and to get clean audio, you want your microphone to be as close to your subject as possible. And secondly, set your camera's audio settings on manual so you have more control over your levels. This also means monitoring your levels. Your levels should fall somewhere between negative 18 decibels and negative 6 decibels when you bring your footage into the edit. So Five, do some tests with your four, external microphone and three, practice setting your levels two, on your camera. One, then bring your footage into an edit nine, and make sure everything is falling eight. where it should be. Hollywood films have entire audio crews. It's really important. So make audio a priority on your project and avoid the bad audio mistake. And lastly, number five. Do sound design and color grading. It's so easy to film your first film, edit it, and call it done. But that's kind of like baking cupcakes and not putting frosting on them. Or building a house and not doing any landscaping. Or you get the idea. Often, the first-time filmmaker is so happy to have just filmed everything and edited it together, and now they just want to export it and show it to the world. But the film could be so much better with the added detail of thoughtful sound design and color grading. So once you finish editing your film, do what is called a sound pass and a color pass. Pick out sound effects that will help further your narrative. Pick out music that fits the tone of your piece. Do a mix so you can hear the dialogue clearly and the music isn't too loud. Then do a color pass. If you're working in Premiere, add a Lumetri color effect and adjust the exposure under basic correction. So your shots all look like they were shot on the same camera with correct exposure. Also, adjust the temperature slightly to warmer tones if the piece is upbeat or bluish tones if the piece is dramatic or mysterious. Boost the saturation so your colors really pop and make the black slightly blacker for that added pop. These little things, while they may seem small, will affect the overall feel of the film and make it look more like a real Hollywood movie. So there you go. All right, let's do a quick review. The five things you can do to avoid first-time filmmaker mistakes are have a story, pay attention to frame rate, pay attention to lighting, pay attention to sound, and do sound design and color grading. All right, time for a quick tip. If you're just getting started out with color grading, you should know about LUTs, which is short for lookup tables. A LUT is basically a file that someone else has created that tells a photo or video editing program how to deal with colors. 
You can open LUTs in Premiere or other editing programs and apply them to your footage to give it a different look. Different LUTs are created to have different effects. Many independent photographers and filmmakers have LUTs they've made available to download for a small fee. And if you do a little Googling, you can find some cool LUTs to try on your own footage. So play around with these. You might just find the perfect effect for your project that someone else has spent hours creating. All right, I think we've covered quite a bit. Now go make that film. All right, as always, if you found any of this helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when the next one is out, and I will catch you next time.